I want to introduce uh, Richard Rackman. He's a botanist and graduate student at Cal State Northridge. He's joined us today to talk about action that you can take in LA to conserve milkweed habitat. Richard. Thank you so much, Antonio. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, and get started. Okay, hope this is good for everyone. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking about Los Angeles, how you can help milkweed and monarchs where you live, right? So I noticed in the chat, everyone had these individual areas that they were curious about Long Beach and Orange County, and you know, they can be hours, hours of driving away. So you wanna know what you can do where you live, right? So hopefully this will be a framework for kind of all across Southern California as well, not just LA County. So where am I, right? So I first wanna acknowledge I'm on Tatambium land. Um, they are the original caretakers of this land and do a much better job of it than a lot of the European colonialists. Um, so part of my belief is that this and other people's beliefs is that they should have the land back. Um, we should pay rent as colonists and we should be giving to indigenous organizations. Um, I'm gonna put in the chat, if I can, a link to a bunch of, um, let's see if it works. I'll do it after. Um, it's gonna be a, a bunch of these links and including this uh, campaign that the Tatamium Nation is doing for education, super cool stuff. Um, please give to local organizations where you live that support indigenous people and giving um, power back to them. Okay, who am I, right? I am someone with entirely too many titles. Um, I'm the biodiversity coordinator for the CSUN Institute for Sustainability at Cal State Northridge. I'm a graduate student studying oak trees in the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area using remote sensing, ground truthing, um, some botanizing. I'm a botanist. I really love studying rare plants. I love studying charismatic megaflora, <laughs> megaflora like oak trees. I like studying weeds and discovering new weeds in Los Angeles. I'm all about those invasive species. Um, and I'm also the Los Angeles County Western Monarch Count Volunteer Coordinator. It's a mouthful and I'll talk more about that. And I'm a, a queer Jewish boyfriend to my wonderful and patient partner who's currently watching this talk as well. <laughs> so why does my identity matter? Why, does, why do any of your identities matter and who you are, right? Let's talk about the identity of milkweed, right? Uh, milkweeds are rural species. They are disturbance adapted plant species. So this narrow leaf milkweed with a tarantula hawk on it, which is a pretty common sight on like that association, right? This narrow leaf milkweed is in a grassy field that's probably this, I think this was in Paramount Ranch, uh, that's seen a lot of anthropogenic effects, a lot of ranching, a lot of really heavy handed uh, agriculture, right? But milkweeds thrive in these environments. So they um, heavily adapted to be in these sorts of places that are, have undergone so much stress, right? Um, um, and so what, what I wanna say is our experiences, the good, the bad, our work experiences, our personal lives, they really define us as conservationists. And it's important to embrace those moving forward because they inform our decision-making, our volunteer opportunities, um, the actions that we take, the organizations we associate with. The other thing I wanna talk about, aside from being a rural, right, is collectivism. And what, what's the connection to monarchs, right? So monarchs migrate in these gigantic, uh, used to be these gigantic populations, right? Um, from the mountains to the coast or on the East Coast, like from North to South into Mexico. And there's strength in numbers, right? They, they, they migrate together to overwhelm predators, right? And I wanna call for you all to do the same. You're, you're not responsible for saving the monarch. You yourself, you, are, you yourself did not put the monarch butterflies in this situation and you yourself are not gonna save them. So, but as a collective, we can do so much better. Be as the monarch flying en masse, right? Not the tarantula hawk, even though I think they're super cool animals. Don't be the tarantula hawk out by yourself as a lone wolf, right? 
there's strength in numbers. And I really want, and there's a bunch of Mariposa lilies that I just think are really pretty, but there's strength in numbers. And I really want you to, to hold on to that. Part of that is permits, permission, and direction. So we are so much stronger as environmentalists when we work together with organizations that are doing existing projects. Part of that, in part of like the project management, right, is the permitting process. And this is where agencies, scientists, researchers, they get permits to either collect specimens, to plant specimens, um, to get seeds, to do gardening in certain areas, restoration work in certain areas. And this permitting process and getting permission from land management agencies, this is important to prevent plants and animals from being poached, right? You don't wanna just go out there and collect a bunch of monarch butterflies and bring them back into your house because you think you're helping, right? You could be hurting the population. And this kind of mixing and matching of mon milkweeds and monarchs and stuff, it, it can also damage gene pools, right? So milkweeds and monarchs can be specially adapted to certain regions of the United States. And so mixing up these sorts of things too often can really cause a lot of damage. So you want to... Thank you. Um, so you really want to be careful about um, causing damage to local ecotypes. Okay. So with all that said, I want to go into projects in LA that help with monarchs and milkweeds. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the main project that I'm working on this fall and winter, and that's with the Xerces Society doing the Western Monarch Count. So I'm the Los Angeles County Volunteer Coordinator. So what you would do, and I'm going to post these links onto the chat after. So what you would do is you would go on to this website, so sign up to be a monitor, and then uh, Xerces Society will send you more information on what that means, what sites you're gonna monitor, uh, and then I'll coordinate with you as well. Around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, emails, like I said, emails are gonna be sent out about trainings. You're gonna get your binoculars, you're gonna go out really early in the morning, right before the sun hits, and then we're gonna look at monarchs that are resting on trees, right, overwintering. So these are different than the residential monarchs that we may have at Cal State Northridge or all around Los Angeles, right? So these are monarchs that are persisting in cities year after year, but th these monarchs that we're most interested in are the migrating monarchs, right? So this is a, a volunteer opportunity for you to get involved, research on the ground, really important stuff. This map that I found of, was from a really fascinating article that I believe one of the speakers was a part of, Stephanie McKnight. Maybe, I'm, maybe she wasn't speaking today, but um, about monarchs and how wildfires are affecting monarch populations, not only like milkweed areas, but also riparian corridors that are overwintering sites as well. So really fascinating stuff. And you could be a part of this kind of research, which is really important. Now, uh, I'm a huge fan of the California Native Plant Society, right? I, I was in the chat, like dumping like the, the South Coast California Native Plant Society, Orange County Native Plant Society, San Gabriel California Native Plant Society, Riverside. There's just so many chapters that you can get involved in. These are This is where you get your teeth as an environmentalist. This is where you could go into a, a, into a county meeting, into your local meeting and say, I'm a member of CNPS. Um, I wanna help um, protect this uh, wild space for monarch butterflies, right? This is where you getting involved with other people that want to support you and champion the causes that you believe in as well. If you can give money, that's great. If you can't give money, that's fine too. They have scholarship opportunities for students. They have volunteer opportunities for students. A lot of times they're even hiring. So CMPS is just an amazing organization. Now, the one that I'm involved with most is the Santa Monica Mountains in Los Angeles County CMPS. Uh, we've kind of carved out a lot of our um, activist, like kind of restoration activities on the Sepulveda Basin Wildlife Preserve. It's about a hundred acre space. Um, it's incredible. It's beautiful. It used to be like cornfields and a ton of invasive species. And now because of the work of CNPS, it's bustling with native species, has thriving monarch and um, milkweed populations. Really cool. So on the second and fourth Saturdays, they do weeding events or they're trying to get that really going. And as well as weekday mornings, um, they provide tools and they'll do training as well. If you're interested, you can uh, contact me or contact George and I'll give you the link after my talk. 
for his email. Um, but please just join your local CMPS chapter. Get involved. Get a board position. Donate money if you can. Don't donate money. Like, use CMPS to champion your local, like, there's someone that's in uh, Pasadena that's having um, a bunch of like California walnut habitat in, in their backyard affected. And like a lot of CNPM mess, CNPS members are interested in this very particular project. Like that's the sort of thing CNPS can do for you. So please get involved. Tree People. Now Tree People is like this LA institution, super cool. They're, they're working out of like Paramount Ranch uh, with NPS, they have a lot of restoration going on there. And also San Francisco Canyon, which has gone through a ton of environmental degradation and, and devastation. And, and so they're doing a lot of restoration in this area. And here they have a ton of milkweed. Um, and the, both of these sites have a ton of milkweed. So if you're interested in like literally helping with milkweed and monarchs, um, tree people can hook you up with these sites. So um, I've linked their calendar, right? And that's where you can find their events. Um, a lot of the sites they work on have also a ton of endangered species that they're helping to monitor and to help preserve. Um, they also have a native plant um, nursery off Mulholland. If you want to learn from Jack, he's one of the most knowledgeable native plant people in LA. I really like talking with him. Um, please get involved. Maybe even donate your time at the nursery and le learn more about propagation. You can go on their calendar or you can also go on their uh, social media page on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Oh, wow, the CSUN Institute for Sustainability. So uh, this is where I work I, as the biodiversity coordinator. We have a thriving monarch population. We have over 40 native plants all throughout the acre property as well as a native, um, as well as a fruit and vegetable garden where we donate hundreds of pounds of produce every year to food pantries like the Sea Sun Food Pantry and the uh, Mend, which is, a, uh, which is a food pantry in the San Fernando Valley. Um, come donate your time with us. Uh, learn about weeding, learn about urban farming, and we're really trying to get this program going with uh, native plant propagation and kind of um, layering um, you know, fruit and vegetables, edible plants, native plants, pollinator spaces. We even just installed like 25 coffee trees. It's a really funky space and we can always use more volunteers. So here's the link there if you want to get involved. I, I highly recommend it. Um, and now I'll take questions. I've, uh, here's my Instagram, my Twitter, my iNaturalist. Please, please, please download iNaturalist. Go get involved in community science. Um, and if you want to just talk my head off about, you know, conservation and uh, please email me. I think this was the only monarch in my entire presentation, but it's like right in the corner there. So anyhow, thank you so much. Um, let me stop sharing and I will put all those links there. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, Izzy, if you could um, let us know if we have any specific questions for Richard. Um, and I just wanted to, to be clear, Richard, you, you're you promoting the Monarch count around Thanksgiving and Christmas, and they can register for, register for that through Xerces. And then they can go to CMPS, which is California Native Plant Society, Santa Monica, and uh, do uh, Sepulveda Basin restoration through there. Yes. Well, I'm kind of, uh, were you asking a question? I, it got a lot of lost there. I just want to answer Susan's yeah, if, question. If, too, that I, put, I put all my links in the chat. Um, so if, if my presentation went a little fast, because I really don't want to, uh, last presentation went a little long, so I didn't want to bleed too much into the next presentation. But I put all my links oh, in it's the all chat for volunteering with CNPS, working at the Sepulveda Basin, my email address, if you want to talk my head off about activism, how to read EIRs and show up to government meetings and get all angry and stuff. Yeah, please contact me. And I put all the links there, Susan. So if you want to link, look up some of those links, I have them there. Antonio, was that, did that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Izzy go. But I think while we're talking, if you could just put your, your screen up again. Um, oh, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, love look, yeah. I love looking at you, Richard, but I'd rather look at the context for, for the restoration. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. So sorry. maybe the Sepulveda stuff. Is he? Yeah, so I didn't really see too many specific questions in here, but um, 
There is one from Gwen talking about monarch eggs. If you can answer that, she's saying, what do you think about the ability to purchase monarch eggs to raise and release butterflies? I'm sure it's educational, but I wonder how that affects population genetics. Um, I would not do that. <laughs> the short answer is um, monarchs. So there's residential monarchs, right? And then there's like migrating monarchs. So residential monarchs, if you raise eggs at home and you release them, right? You're, there's like a 99% chance your monarchs are going to end up becoming residential. Um, they might even interbreed with the migrating monarchs, which there's new up and coming research that's suggesting that this is negatively impacting migrating monarchs and converting migrating monarchs into residential monarchs, which then become like pools for um, this protozoan and other kind of diseases, right? Um, so I would just, that, that's kind of why I really wanted to emphasize this presentation on working with existing organizations, right? I, I think having native plants in your yard is super important. I think everyone should be gardening with native plants. I also really want to emphasize go, doing restoration in existing wild spaces, right? Um, the Sepulveda Basin is pretty wild. But I would say even more so than that, what like tree people's doing and what like the resource conservation districts, like Ventura County Resource Conservation District, the Resource Conservation District of the Santa Monica Mountains, what they're doing, they get money to go into these existing spaces. CNPS does this a lot where we, we do restoration in wild spaces and we're actually helping right? Um, when you, you're at home and you're like capturing monarchs or buying eggs online, like there's a lot more room for error, right? Like that's kind of taking things into your own hands and excuse my language of playing God, I guess. But like when you're like working with like scientists and like land managers and indigenous nations, when you're like working with experts on the ground, um, that's when your impact is the highest, I would say. I, I hope that makes sense. Like yeah, I think that answered it pretty well. Um, so someone else was asking, is the CSUN garden open for volunteering and for people to come and see right now? Right. So we have a protocol. So the answer is yes and no. So we have a protocol where if you want to volunteer and you contact us, we'll send you COVID-19 uh, survey where you'll take the survey confirm that you don't, you know, you're not exhibiting any symptoms for COVID-19 and then you'll come volunteer with us. So we do have, we are, we currently do have volunteers coming to the garden uh, and we're about to start a really cool uh, climate core program where we're, we're paying, we get to pay a bunch of interns, um, myself included, I guess. And we're going to be doing um, a lot of different projects, kind of reimagining what we can do with that space in terms of native plant propagation, um, coffee, mixed coffee orchard, fruit orchard, kind of um, the situation with like donating um, food to food pantries. We've got a lot of really funky stuff in the pipeline. So yes, you can absolutely come. I'll teach you a ton about invasive species. I'll teach you as much as I can and that I've been learning from Antonio about native plants. Um, yeah, come come volunteer. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We have a really, it's about an acre big. Um, we have endangered species like the Davidson's Bushmallow from the San Fernando Valley and um, uh, what is it? What is Berberus Nevinia? Nevin's Bayberry. Yeah, we have a bunch of Nevin's Bayberry. We have a Tory pine and we have a Tory pine for uh, like native plant garden. We got a bunch of really cool stuff. So come come volunteer. Yeah. Any other questions? I think there are, there's a few uh, general questions in the chat as far as like, um, uh, is Sustainability Institute Garden the same as the CSUN Botanical Garden? No, so that's a very good question. Those are two very different spaces. So the CSUN Institute for Sustainability, CSUN Food Garden, that's gonna be on the north side of campus towards the dorms, um, slightly south of North, Northridge Academy, the high school, um, like I think it's a magnet school, but it's like slightly south of that um, high school, like near the baseball fields. The botanical garden, which is closed to the public until the fall, and then it might even be closed in the fall, 
That's near Chaparral Hall by the biology building. Um, that place is magical. It's absolutely magical. And they have a ton of milkweed there. And Brenda Kano does a fantastic job managing it. And in the fall, if you're interested in volunteering with Brenda, the Seasun Botanic Garden might be the best botanic garden in the San Fernando Valley. I said it, fight me. I really love it. You'll love it too. Volunteer with Brenda and you'll learn a ton. So um, shout out to the Seasun Botanic Garden. It's so cool. Oh my gosh. It doesn't just have native plants, but it has a ton of native plants. So it's really cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Richard, very much. Um, big hug, brother. Um, yeah, you look, me... you look almost like Bob Allen with that that beard. Okay, so I thought someone was going to bring that up. Um, I like to think that I started growing out my beard before I met Bob Allen. I recently met him <laughs> because of my work with SoCal botanist, but um, Bob Allen's really cool, and I, I hope to accomplish just a fraction of what he's accomplished in his life. So, yeah. Well, thank you for all your energy and your, your time in doing this work, Richard. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so we haven't had enough chance, I don't think, to even just promote ourselves. We've been doing a very bad job. And so who is putting this conference on is SAMO Fund. We work directly with the National Park Service here in the Santa Monica Mountains. Um, we get to run the nursery here on their property. We, we do a lot of things apart from plants. Um, but I'll encourage you guys, if you're interested in supporting this work, which is completely free today, um, to go to samofund.org. We'll put the slide up after this last speaker and support our work. We're trying to hire three part-time youth this summer. Uh, we call it Mission Milkweed. And we're trying to get over 2 million milkweed seed collected, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually a very small amount of pods. Um, if each pod has about 100 to 200 seed in it, um, it's actually not too much seed. And our goal is to start bulking it here at the nursery so we can give seed away so that we can grow um, plants and give plants away to community gardens, to restoration sites, to homeowners, etc. So um, there's the link in the chat right there. 